Hello and welcome to the first in our video mini-series about manners and etiquette in 12th century England. My name's Philip, uh, I've been a reenactor since around 2010, I'm a member of Historia Normanis, a Norman reenactment society. Now as this is the first video in this series, I want to begin by giving a little bit of context, why manners are important in the Norman world, and why it's important for us as reenactors to understand them. With that in mind, I'm going to begin by just explaining what manners and etiquette actually are. Put in the simplest terms, manners describes how we behave and etiquette describes how we ought to behave. I'm sure we can all think of examples of good and bad manners, essentially good and bad behaviour, that we've been taught when growing up. Now, etiquette isn't much different. The word itself actually comes from the courts of the 18th century in France. Now, French courtiers would be given little pieces of paper which told them how to behave in certain situations so as not to embarrass themselves with bad manners in front of the king. Throughout this mini-series, we'll also be using the word courtesy. Now, courtesy itself is a medieval French word that literally means how to behave at court. The very existence of the word courtesy gives us our first glimpse into the manners of the medieval world. It's a recognition that a person does not, and should not, behave in exactly the same way in all situations. The way that we behave with our family, at home, in private, can be worlds apart from how you would behave with people in public, or at feasts, or at court. These changes in behaviour, this distinction between good and bad manners, is universal to all human cultures, in maybe lesser and greater degrees, but they are a reflection and a reinforcement of social hierarchy, and the Normans were no strangers to hierarchy. To fully understand the importance of social hierarchy to the Normans, first you need to recognise their cosmology. A religious belief for the Normans was intertwined with every aspect of their lives, including social structures. Belief at the time was that God had created an ordered universe, perfect and structured. Man's disobedience in the Garden of Eden upset that order and brought sin into the world. Therefore, order and structure is the ideal, and disorder and chaos is sinful. Now, this belief permeated everything. There was a concept called the chain of being, a hierarchy into which every aspect of the universe fitted, with God at the top and Satan at the bottom. The chain of being included human society as well. The king was ordained to rule by God, and the feudal structure all fit into the chain. Social hierarchy was divinely inspired. Practically, this belief can be seen manifested in manners and etiquette. A major part of living in medieval society was understanding the social order and reinforcing it. This had to be done through speech and action. You needed to behave in the correct way for your social class, and also show deference to those above you. And this also included, despite what Hollywood might have you think, treating the people below you in the proper way as well. They occupied a lower, yet no less essential rung in the social ladder. It seems fairly open and shut there. There's a social structure, you learn how your class should behave, you do that, you die happy. Even bees can do it. The difficulty comes though with the emergent middle classes of the 11th and 12th century. As society begins to become more upwardly mobile, this hierarchy begins to be shaken people weren't quite sure how to behave. This is why we start to see uh, books of etiquette and manners being produced from the early 13th century onward. And these are overtly aimed at middle classes, teaching them how to differentiate themselves from those below them by emulating the actions of those above them. In this way, manners are very much like fashion. What the lords did, the subjects soon followed. So, 
As interesting as this all may be, what does it have to do with reenactment? Why are we making these videos now, when we've been getting along fine for years without them? Well, the answer is that we, as a reenactment society, have changed, and are still changing. With so many members, the division of the three estates, and bigger, more ambitious shows, we're now beginning to represent all aspects of medieval life. What may have been acceptable for a handful of soldiers is incongruous for priests, sheriffs, and countesses. Our expansion into dramatic displays on the domestic side of Norman life is exciting. However, it doesn't make much sense to discuss law courts, feasts, and religion without also showing an awareness of period manners and behaviour. With all that being said, I want to make it very clear that nothing in these videos is meant to be taken as prescriptive. Our intention is just to provide a helpful guide for people who want to uh, expand on their mummery and their portrayal of medieval life. Our aim is just to help those members understand and explore the characters that they're wanting to portray. So none of this is how you must behave, just things that you can do if you want to improve maybe your enjoyment of shows. Now, uh, with that in mind, I should probably just mention that uh, most of the information that I present here has been gleaned from a lot of primary and secondary sources. Most notably, though, is um, the Urbanus Magnus by Daniel of Beckles. And this is the earliest medieval manners book that's been produced in England. It appears at the start of the 13th century, and Daniel himself is believed to have been someone who served in the court of Henry II. Uh, amongst secondary sources, um, I would say that uh, Courtly Culture by Joaquin Bumke is just invaluable. Now, it provides uh, various sources from all across France and Germany discussing courtesy and how it develops. So, join us in our next video where we're going to be discussing day-to-day -day manners in 12th century England. Essentially, how to talk, how to walk, and who to bow to. We'll also provide various visual examples of the things we're going to be talking about. So, I hope to see you there. Farewell.